From the shortest racetrack of the season to the longest, from Nürburgring, we travel to the Slovakia ring. The FIA European Track Racing Championship stops in Slovakia, not far from Bratislava. Four races are on the programme, and who will be the championship leader come half-time? The best prospect for this unofficial title is four times European champion and current leader of the championship, Jochen Hahn. The Iveco pilot has already taken five wins this year and has 137 points to his name. 42 points behind is the defending champion from the Czech Republic, Adam Lachko, with his Bagheera Freightliner. We are in Slovakia, in Slovakia ring. It's like a second home race because many, many years ago it's Czechoslovakia. Uh, my expectation for the weekend, I hope I stay on the podium and I hope uh, on the end of this weekend I stay more uh, on the second or maybe first. I think I'm leading with about 40 points now. This is not a safe thing yet. We really have to try to take every point with us. At the Nürburgring, I have lost some points, just did too many mistakes there. I figured I'd come and play a little, and I flew off. There you are, brought down to the bottom of the fans again. Third in the championship is Norbert Kish. The Hungarian, as well as Hahn and Lachko, had already set the pace last year. However, the competition is very tight at the moment. Between the second and eighth in the overall standings, there are just 40 points. In the Grammar Truck Cup, British driver Shane Brayton is currently the leader. There are separate standings for the semi-professional pilots and the rookies. At the Nürburgring, the man in number 17 took all four wins and therefore the full 60 points. In Slovakia, the 49-year-old has qualified for the Super Bowl and finally put his MAN truck on starting position eight. Two seconds faster than Britain is defending champion Adam Lachko. He takes the pole position time of 2 minutes 44.014 seconds, his first pole of the season. We have in front of us a very long race in very hot weather and here is very slippery and after the time practice or free practice when we look to front tires, not only me, I think everybody, it's so much destroyed. We will see how it looks everything after the race. Second on the grid is Antonio Albafetti. A good two tenths were missing from the Spaniard compared to Lachko. On the second row, the two teammates, Jochen Hahn and Steffi Halm. The German lady is, at the moment, behind Albafetti, fifth in the overall championship standings. On the third row, the black and red truck of Norbert Kisch. Next to him, Sasha Lentz. It's 30 degrees Celsius, the outside temperature. The asphalt almost twice as hot. On the start-finish straight, 20 metres wide, there's plenty of space for all of the trucks, and we go racing. Lachko loses out, though, on the run towards the first corner. A slow start, and the reigning champion loses place after place. Albafetti takes over the lead, and Jochen Hahn gets past Lachko as well. The pressure continues for Lachko. Here on the left, Sasha Lentz on the attack. To the right is Steffi Hahn, who has to take the long way round on the outside and loses several places. The field battles on. Steffi Hahn runs wide, so too does Norbert Kisch. Albafetti, however, leads the way just ahead of Jochen Hahn. Steffi Halm is not giving up. She wants to take eight from Frankie Wojciech, but she's off the road. She's after eighth place and therefore pole position for race two on the reverse grid. Up front, Albafetti leads the way. Steffi Halm is on the back of Wojciech now. Stefan fast behind her. Fast attacks. Steffi Halm is still stuck behind Wojciech. It's a great battle raging on between all of them. Steffi Halm challenges. 
Wojciech breaks late. There's nothing either of them can do to get around the corner and both run wide. Hull then gets collected by Shane Brereton and Stefan Fass. It was not very pleasant for me. For what he has driven, it was not fair in my eyes, nor necessary. In the end, this led to the accident, which is why I failed to finish. For me, this is very annoying, because I would not have guessed that of Frankie's driving either. I was trying to get past him, so I went after him for so long. He was much slower. Blocking is OK, but what he did was not OK. The race was done for both of them. With damage, Halm into retirement. At the front, Alba Fete leads Halm. Behind them, the fight for third, Sasha Lent, battling with Adam Latchko and then Norbert Kish. Lent just hanging on to the place, but under huge pressure from both of the former champions behind him. Eventually, Latchko was able to find the gap and go through on the inside. And it wasn't long before Norbert Kish would follow suit. Lent dumped down to fifth. Never gave up fighting, but despite a little bit of a rub with the Hungarian driver, Norbert Kish was able to get past Lentz and power through for fourth position. After eight laps and a race time of just over 22 minutes, Antonio Albafetti takes the win. Yeah, I'm glad that it was an exciting race for the spectators and for the TV. So, yeah, I hope to, to keep going in this line for the next race. Here again, the most discussed scene. The start from the point of view of Steffi Halm. In front of her, it's Alba Fetti, who seems to pass Latchko almost effortlessly. I lost the pole position after a few metres after the start, because when I change the gear, I have a spin of the clutch. And after this situation, is not possible something doing, and you must wait when the clutch come again and uh, the grip coming. In the end, Albafetti was one second ahead of Jochen Hahn. Adam Latchko third. For Antonio Albafetti, it is the second win of the season. For Jochen Hahn, the seventh podium of the year. Hahn extends his advantage in the championship, with Norbert Kish fourth in race one and also the only driver in the field, setting a lap time of under 2 minutes and 46 seconds. Stefan Fass ranked 11th, although he came to the finish line only 23 thousandths behind the 8th place Shane Brereton. The reason? A time penalty for overspeeding. So the Grammar Cup went to Brereton again. Three laps of that race, I had a puncher. So I had to fight Stefan with a puncher. Um, me and Stefan had rubbed together with the incident with Steffi. Um, all three of them had gone in too deep and I just drove up the inside and caught me coming out. So then I was struggling, so I just had to drive very carefully. For the winning team, Team Truck Sport looked bare now. The result of race one had special consequences, at least for one mechanic. He says, if you win and uh, Luis got some points, I take okay. my head off. That's it. So that's it. I win and Luis takes some points, so he have to do it now. Oh, los mellizos, los mellizos. <laughs> We're already at the start of race two of the day. As eighth in the first race, Shane Brereton able to start from pole position. Next to him is Andre Kurzin. He has a slow start and he's passed by Sasha Lentz with Rene Reinert on the inside line going for third. At the first corner, there's contact. Norbert Kish is involved, so too is Andre Kurzin, so too is Adam Latchko. Britain, Reinert and Lentz, the top three on the first lap of the race. But Jochen Hahn is already piling the pressure onto the opposition. On the 900 metre long start finish straight, he sets his Iveco truck next to the MAN of Sasha Lentz. And despite being limited to 160 kilometres an hour as a top speed, they run side by side to turn one. Finally, Harm goes third. In 
in midfield, there's more drama. Stefan Fass and Frankie Wojciech come to grief. Luis Rafenko goes past, and this is Andre Kurzim's view. Kurzim battles with Rafenko. There's contact between the two. The Spaniard had a big slide, but he's able to continue. He falls out of the points, though. On board with Sasha Lenz. In front of him, Jochen Hahn and Rene Reinert. Hahn seizes the advantage. There's contact, but he goes through. The corner before, he had a little problem. He had a slight oversteer, and I had to take advantage of that. If a racer doesn't attack when the front man makes a mistake, he doesn't have to do this. Attack. I don't think he saw me. He's got a normal distraction, and there's been contact. Now, of course, you can say that was my fault, but I would rather say that he was surprised and caught by surprise, and it was a racing incident. Again, no podium for Lenz. He loses fourth place to Kish here. Thumbs up for Shane Brereton. In the end, Hahn was perhaps faster, but couldn't find a way past the British driver. Victory for Shane Brereton after eight laps at the Slovakia ring. Hahn second, followed by Reinert, Kiss and Lenz. It's the second FIA ETRC win for Brereton after his first victory in Most in the Czech Republic last year. It's a delighted Shane Brereton on the top step of the podium here at the Slovakia ring. For races two and four of the weekend, the winner gets only 10 points instead of 20 due to the reverse grid. Second gets nine, third, eight, and so on. Britain doesn't care though. More important for him is another win in the Grammar Truck Cup. Me and Pike, we spoke before the race and um, Pike sort of said, don't let go of the sight of the Grammar Cup. That's what we want to win. So if they're beating you about or making it too hard, long as you win that, 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 that'll be a good result. So that's what we agreed. Britain extends his lead in the Grammar Cup, and so does Jochen Hahn in the overall classification. There's fresh oil for the race truck instead of an after-work beer for the mechanics. Hahn's truck respectfully gets its transmission, given a full service. Day two at the Slovakia ring. Again, top conditions. And again, two races for points and trophies on the menu. Before the start of race three, though, there was a very special demo lap. Iveco showed its brand new Stralis natural power. The 400 horsepower truck drives on natural gas with the same power, payload, and total cost of ownership as its diesel equivalent, but reduced emissions. In any case, the NOx values by 60% and particles by 99%, which are almost no longer present. This makes it possible to circumvent the driving bans in the cities. These are occurring in more and more cities in Europe. This is not a problem with our low emissions. The vehicles are already ready for use. Around 1,500 of these trucks are currently on the road in Europe. This vehicle is not the future, but already a reality. Nicht die Zukunft, sondern die Realität. With its range of about 1,600 kilometers, the Iveco Stralis Natural Power could easily do 250 laps at the Slovakia ring. But it was the race trucks this weekend to do some laps and get ready for race three. The Iveco of Jochen Hahn is ready to race again. With a strong qualifying, he made it to the front row of the grid.
The lap was free of mistakes, but I had the feeling that this was the maximum for me. That's why I stopped qualifying after one lap. The time was solid, and my plan was to save tyres a bit. The second was good, and we have a good position. Adam Latchko was two tenths faster than the German, and so took pole position. The reigning champion is determined for a win. I hope I don't have a, again a clutch spin and I try make the best with the Jochen. And uh, I hope I come maybe same position on the finish, but it's very hard to say. Behind the Czech German front row follows a German Hungarian one. Steffi Hahn was two tenths slower than teammate Hahn. Next to her, in position four, Norbert Kirsch, who was beaten by Hahn by just eight hundredths of a second. Row three is German and Spanish. The winner of race one, Antonio Albafetti, lines up alongside René Reinert in the blue truck. A special feature just before the start, the Slovakia national anthem, performed live by Miroslav Dvorsky. They're away in racing. All eyes are on pole setter Adam Lachko. Will he be able to do a better start than on the opening day? Lachko this time has no issues from the start. Jochen Hahn also makes a good getaway and they're side by side at turn one. It's super tight in midfield. Frankie Wojciech in the centre of the action once again. There's contact with Shane Britton and Louis Rokenko. Franco gets turned sideways, Britton into the side of him, and Stefan Fass has to take evasive action. Latchko and Hahn pull a small gap at the front of the field. On board with the check, right behind him, it's Hahn. Latchko runs a little bit wide and leaves the door open for Hahn. He takes the advantage and passes the reigning champion. Jochen Hahn, the new race leader. Latchko tries to fight back, though. But once ahead, Hahn sets the fastest lap of the race, almost as quick as he went in qualifying. Once into the lead, he was determined not to lose the advantage. Back to Latchko, the two of them still fighting. Our truck feels a bit strange here this weekend. Sometimes I can push like hell, but sometimes it feels not strong enough again. Luckily, it felt good and I could pass Adam. We're back on board with Frankie Wojciech. In front of him, Ray Coleman. The distance between the two is way too big for an attack by the Czech driver. Wojciech tries it though, breaks late, gets himself alongside Coleman, and there's a big whack. Wojciech pushes the Brit with all his engine power until Coleman succeeds to get out of this situation. Wojciech's already under observation from the race director. He receives a five race penalty on probation after the race due to this and other offences. So next time out at Most, he's got to behave. The winner of this situation is the German driver in number 24, Stefan Fass. He gets past both of them to win the Grammar Truck Cup in this race. Teammate Norbert Kirsch tries hard to pass Steffi Halm, but can't succeed. Steffi in third is constantly feeling the pressure from Kish, but a perfect drive and no mistakes. Steffi Halm fends him off, and also Antonio Albafetti next in the queue behind. And what about Livewire Wojciech now with his smashed windscreen? His next target is Dutchman Erwin Klein Nagelvoort. No issues this time, however. Okay. 
In contrast, it's Klein Nagelvoort who has a problem. Wojciech goes past, Klein Nagelvoort spins himself into the gravel. From the cockpit perspective of the man from Ryson, it's easy to see that he gets too close to Wojciech and loses it. On the run to the checkered flag, Jochen Hahn is able to defend all the attacks of Lachko and takes the win. It's another victory for the multiple champion, to the delight of his team, his wife Diana and father Conrad, who are always there at every race. We have a nice advantage at the moment, but it can be gone so quickly. So now we are going to push and give everything. Deserved applause for the Eveco pilot and a new addition to the probably huge trophy collection of Jochen Hahn. The result of the third race. Due to time penalties, Stefan Faust makes it to eighth and so is on pole for race four. Only 13 drivers are classified. Antonio Albafetti disqualified due to technical problems with his speed system three times over speeding. Yeah, we have a problem with the uh, uh, electronics, you know. It's broken by the middle of the race. Well, not by the middle, by the end of the race, actually. And, uh, yeah, I was fighting with uh, Norby, and uh, I didn't see the, the light, so I see the, the overspeed, and it was too late. As a result, the Spaniard has to start the last race at the Slovakia ring from the last row, not what he is used to. On the front row, Stefan Fass. Alongside him in the blue truck is René Reinert. Right after the start, bodywork is up in the air. Klein Nagelvoort gets hit by Britain's bodywork, and Reinert takes the lead into turn one. On board with Britain. This the view from the British driver's truck, built by Hahn Racing. There's some great racing going on, but Stefan Faust runs out wide. He loses more places and is passed by Hahn and Halm. While hardly anything happens in the first eight places, Shane Britton, with whom we're on board here, is battling with Ollie James. He's the second driver in the Bagheera team. Antonio Albafetti is there as well, trying to work his way out from the back of the grid. This battle is for 9th, 10th and 11th. The fight for leadership, though, is between René Reinert and Norbert Kisch. The Hungarian plays all his experience from 10 years of track racing and uses that gap that Reinert offers. He goes through into the lead. On board with Wojciech. He's on the back of Antonio Albafetti. But as he locks up, Ray Coleman makes a move on the inside. They've already come to blows once this weekend, and there's contact between the two of them yet again. Coleman comes out on top this time, but up front it is Norbert Kish on his way to his first victory of the season, ahead of René Reinert, Sasha Lentz and Andre Kurzin. The Hungarian wins 2.6 seconds ahead of Reinert and Lentz, it's a very happy tactical Ferenc Fancic team in the pit lane. Around 30 seconds behind the winners, another big battle. Ollie James and Shane Britton battling it out, just as Lachko and Hahn were in race three. Britton finds the better line and finishes 16 thousandths ahead of Ollie James in ninth. While Norbert Kish takes the FIA ETRC win, it is teammate Stefan Faust to win the Grammar Truck Cup. Starting from the pole for the first time was a really nice experience. Winning the Grammar Cup two times this weekend is also super nice for me and the team. Then twice the Grammar Cup to win today was natürlich mega. Norbert Kish is super delighted about his first victory of the season. Water instead of champagne at Team Reinert. Due to overspeeding, the German gets a 10 second time penalty. That drops him to seventh place. 
Kish, Lentz and Kurzin becomes the top three. Jochen Hahn in fourth banking points. Sure, if you go to the finish in second place and then get the message via the radio that you get a 10 second penalty and the second place and the podium are gone, that is quite annoying. In the overall classification, Jochen Hahn extends his lead to 57 points and is the mid-season championship leader. Adam Latchko second, with Norbert Kish up to third now at the expense of Antonio Albafetti. For Kish, it has been a good weekend, and he's creeping up the order within the championship. Very happy because the weekend was not so good, but um, to go to the summer break with the victory is definitely nice. The FIA ETRC is back in action on the first weekend of September with the fifth event of the series in Most in the Czech Republic.